What's up you guys, I'm back with another video and in today's video we're going to talk about the future of software engineering and how I believe the role is going to evolve in the coming years. So let's get started. Alright, before we talk about the future, let's talk about what software engineering really is. Like, What does it mean to you? Well, to me, it's both an art and a craft. It's a craft in the sense that it demands technical expertise, precision and a relentless pursuit of excellence. We write code to solve a problem, we fix the bugs and keep making it better through updates. But software engineering is also very much an art form. It requires creativity, innovation and the ability to design elegant solutions to complex problems. When we design user interfaces or architecting systems, we're not just following a rule book. We are creating, inventing and pushing boundaries. Think about it. The best software isn't just functional, it's also beautiful and invokes an emotion in the user's experience. This is why the best tools and apps that we use on a daily basis have a beautifully designed user interface and a delightful user experience. Well, now that we have established that baseline, let's talk about where we're going. I believe that this dual nature of software engineering, the art and craft form, is going to blend even more in the coming future. As AI makes it more accessible, more people can build more software, it's going to be very important to raise the bar of the quality of these solutions. I believe that, yes, you will have hundreds of alternatives for every app or every problem that you want to solve. The winner in each category is going to be the most thoughtfully designed and most well implemented quality solutions. So in this world, the quality of software engineering becomes even more important. Because yes, today you can use AI like Cursor and Claude to build like a very good demo with a very good initial starting point of an application. But when you launch it, you will see how much it lacks the depth, the depth of thinking, the depth of designing it and like there's just too many use cases to consider. So what do you do about it? If you want to be a software engineer in this highly competitive market, you have to stand out. You have to have this high bar of quality in the product that you build. This is your craft and you have to be a master of the craft. So my recommendation is to shift your mindset. Instead of building clones of popular tools like Netflix clone and YouTube clone and stuff like this, build real projects. Build real projects that solve real problems. And when you're building these things, right, what will happen is you'll start to see how much you have to think about every single use case, every single button and how it behaves and what it does. When you build a simple clone project, you look at it like, okay, my project is looking kind of like YouTube and it has these video tiles and stuff, but you don't know what's broken. You don't know what's not working. You don't know where the bugs are. You don't know if that's the right use of it, you know? So I would suggest like, let's start with a problem, right? Think about a problem that you personally face or somebody you know faces in their daily lives. And then we will think about how we will solve this problem with software. Once you put in this thought, you design a solution, which is like, which considers all these use cases in mind. And then you make a software that solves this problem that makes it easy for the person. It solves their pain points. And that's when you really get the essence of software engineering. So I would suggest that start with a problem. Think about the problems that you face or talk to people like talk to marketers and designers and even developers like there's so many problems, so many frustrating things we face while building. So when you start building solutions for these, that's when you will build real projects and you can build these real projects in public, right? If you if you go to Twitter, there's a vibrant build in public community. You can participate in this community, talk about what you're building and just build connections with similar people who are in similar journeys. In the end, what's going to happen is you're going to get users. Your goal should be to get real users for your software and that's when you will start to learn a lot more because different users will see your software from different perspectives. You might be, you know, tunnel vision into believing that what you've built is beautiful and the best piece of software in the world. But when other people start using it, you will start seeing the gaps. You will start seeing how other people perceive it. Like what you believe a button should do might not be what is the natural intuition of another user. So when you start having real users, you will start noticing bugs, you will start noticing how you can optimize and improve your user experience. And that's when you're getting into the real mindset of a software engineer. And when you have real users and you're solving a real problem for them, trust me, they will be more than happy to pay you for it. This is the turning point, guys. This is what I want you to understand. The end goal of building software is to solve problems to make the world better. So that's what you should keep in mind when working on your next project. Once you have these real users and you're solving a real pain point for them, I'm sure they will be happy to pay you for it. Well, in the worst case, you can use these projects to talk to other companies about, look, this is what I've built. This is similar to what you guys are building. And I love working on this problem space. It can help you get a job. 
at the very least. But in the best case scenario, you have built your own startup. This is what I want to really push. I want us all to build multiple startups in different categories and in different markets. And I want us to take it forward all the way to having real users and real paying customers and growing it as a startup. Because trust me, MRR or monthly recurring revenue is much better than salary. It's a lot more sustainable and it's a lot more valuable. Having said that, I know that in the beginning it might seem hard to come up with these problems and to come up with the solutions to these problems. That's why you have me and you have the internet, you know. Start using Twitter and getting involved in these discussions. Start engaging with people who are building. Start following the people who are building. There's a whole indie hackers built in public community. They're all building useful softwares. And what they're doing is basically taking these big companies like big SaaS companies of Silicon Valley and they are taking their most used features or most painful features and they're building a new product just based on one feature. If you solve one feature really well and that one feature adds value to a business, they're going to pay you for it. And this is going to be going deep into one problem space. Like I can show you a lot of examples. If you want me to make a video about what kind of startups people are building and what kind of startups you can build, let me know in the comments down below and I'll start working on it. But for this one, I just want to give you a high level mindset of how to think about problems and how to start thinking about building software and how to get into the real software engineering world. And another important but underrated thing is when you start working on these real projects and you start rolling it out to customers and deploying it and launching it, you will start seeing so many new problems, so many frustrations like, oh, you know, like, why is it so hard to do this? Why do I have to waste so much time to do this little thing? Maybe I can build a software to simplify this because trust me, these are the real problems that real people face. Like, for example, when I was building Philly, I noticed this problem that, okay, I need to get logs, right? I need to, when I'm building it in development, I see all the logs on my terminal or on my console. When it's running in production, it's hard to get those logs surface back to you. There's a lot of solutions like Sentry for error reporting, there's Paper Trail, Better Stack. There's a lot of solutions that people have built for logging, but I wanted something really, really simple that I can customize and use just for myself. And what I came up with was a simple Telegram based solution. So like the logging from the front end goes to a Cloudflare worker and it gets routed to a Telegram, which that Telegram texts me that, hey, there's this problem and then I can easily go and fix it. Right. But this took some time. I had to go and register for a Telegram API. I have to go create a bot and then move these tokens and set up an API endpoint. In this moment, I had this idea. Maybe I could build a simple service that somebody can just come in and create a Telegram bot with one click and route it to wherever they want it. And then they have the simple Telegram based logger, which is easy to use and it's free because Telegram is free. So, you know, like you could sell the solution easily for, I don't know, 15, 20 dollars a month or you could sell it for a lifetime value, whatever works for you. But but this is just one of these examples, right? As you start working on these real problems and building real solutions, you will run into so many more problems that everybody runs into. And building a good user-friendly solution to these problems is what's going to take you to the next level. That's how you should be thinking about it. And like I said, in the worst case, you can start talking about what you're building online and start maybe sharing it as an open source tool. There's a huge movement on Twitter going on right now where people are building open source alternatives to popular paid SaaS software. And this is a great way to start as well. Maybe you like some software, which is a paid SaaS subscription software. You can build a simpler open source version of it and you will start seeing so many people support you and so many people join together in this. And in the worst case scenario, it will lead you to your next job, but that shouldn't be your goal. That should be your plan B. Plan A is to convert this into a real business, into a real startup with real monthly recurring revenue. That's what I would suggest and that's why I will recommend building because I believe the world belongs to builders and we are just getting started. There's so much more software to build in this world and we are going to be the ones building this. So let me know what you're going to build in the comments down below. And if you don't have ideas, let me know that in the comments as well so I can start thinking about how I can start sharing a lot more ideas with you because this is me. I get new ideas every single day doing normal things now. I have so many ideas for so many software tools that I can build but I don't have the time. But I'm happy to share this with you guys and I'm hoping that you can build this and one day you can have your own company and hopefully I can contribute a little bit into it as well. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you like this one and I'll see you on the next one.